The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 30 minutes to go until the start of trading. We're going to mix market to start things off right now, folks. You got the S&Ps positive by about four points, trading at 46.91. NASDAQ, we'll call it flat. It's, uh, excuse me, S&Ps negative by four points. NASDAQ 100 positive by one. We got the Dow off 54 points right now. We got the Russell off by nine points right now. And I'm going to jump right over, folks. I was a little bit rushed this morning because uh, I was getting ready for Mr. Pezzavento's live trading webinar, which just kicked off in our Tiger Shop room. Uh, if you head on over to the front page of TFNN, folks, you'll see Larry's beautiful face up there. He's in the Tiger Shop. You can still sign up for his live trading webinar, folks. Uh, kick things off right at 9 o'clock. He'll be in there till 2 p.m. Eastern time. That will be archived if you can't attend the full five hours but he's in there there's a good turnout in there already uh i encourage you to check it out folks and uh larry he will not be doing a show today because he's gonna be live trading so check that out kicking things off should be a good day hopefully uh for some live trading action in the market all right we jump back let's jump to commodities right now Bitcoin, a little bit of pop this morning, back above 60,000. We look at Bitcoin, we're trading right now at 60,360. You jump over to crude, back under $80. Crude trading at 79.35. We're gonna talk to our man, uh, Teddy Kegstet, at 40 past the hour as we do. Excuse me for that, still making sure I'm settled uh, in the right room, everything going on. Um, Teddy Kegstat, we'll be talking crude. We'll be talking some Forex. Uh, we talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. We got gold contract catching a bit this morning, up about $12 at 18.65 this morning. We got silver up about 20 cents right now. And we jump over and kick things off. And let's kick it off with uh, Target. Why not? Now, we had Walmart yesterday um, trading a little bit lower, and Target. Tops earnings estimates, but fair shares fall as retailer focuses on keeping customer prices low. It's going to be a common theme, folks, in terms of how they fight through uh, what we're dealing with in terms of pricing. Uh, our man Dave White had a great update out for his newsletter this morning, Path of Least Resistance. I was reading that early this morning, uh, and he made a great point out there, just talking about... Um, where are you getting your goods from in terms of if you're dealing with overseas production, Target, Walmart, maybe a little bit of a problem. You're dealing with more domestic in the likes of Home Depot and Lowe's, maybe not as big of a problem. There's your action on Target. We're down about, uh, what is that, 12 bucks, right, from 266 down to 254 right now. Down to 254 and we jump over to uh, Lowe's this morning. Uh, accelerating higher from 245 we're up to 253 right now on low shares and we jump over and see what we have happening on target target tops earnings estimates but shares fall as retailer focuses on keeping customer prices low uh, target topped earnings for the fiscal third quarter we get down to uh, the numbers earnings 303 a share versus 283 revenue 25.65 billion versus 24.78 billion Net income jumped to 1.49 billion. Uh, total revenue, how about total revenue, right? These companies, talk about crushing it. Rising to 13% to 25.65 billion from the same period a year ago. And uh, comp sales in the third quarter, just staggering numbers across the board in terms of what they're dealing with. Uh, strongest month of the quarter was August. You're talking about back to school. Store comp sales increased 9.7%. Digital comp sales grew 29%. How about that number? Uh, as it gears up for the holiday shoppers, COO John Mulligan said the company's making long-term investments, uh, key seasonal moments. 
But nonetheless, you're talking about trading lower on Target shares this morning. We jump back, Target shares down to 254. We jump over to Walmart. Walmart, there's your action yesterday to 151 to 142 right now. Uh, and we jump to Home Depot from yesterday's action, holding well at about 391. And again, lows this morning, trading higher to 253. Lowe's has just been quite a juggernaut to the upside. Look at this run that Lowe's has had. You back it up to August, we're at 184. We're going to open today at 253 for Lowe's, dramatically rising on that one. Give me one sec as I jump around to what else we have going on here. All right. In terms of other movers, we got to jump over to Rivian. So check this one out. Rivian yesterday, I saw, had eclipsed $150 billion market cap. This stock just does not stop, folks. R-I-V-N is their symbol. Uh, and looks like it might have stopped overnight. So we're up to 179 We pull up the Analyze tab. We jump over right now, you're talking about $136 billion market cap at that price. Remarkable when you think about pre-revenue. Pre-revenue company, um, kudos to the CEO of that company. You talk about getting it done, man. Not many people, and they got a $100,000 car order from Amazon, but not many people, folks, could push out a pre-revenue company and value it at $150 billion. I watch Shark Tank a lot. I like watching that program, talk about innovators, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, and the sharks. And listen, those sharks, they, 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 the conversations are entertainment most of the time, folks, um, because they try and get deals that no venture capitalist would give them in any way. And they're always talking about pre-revenue. You know, oh, you have a million dollar valuation pre-revenue. You have a $5 million valuation pre-revenue. How about $150 billion valuation pre-revenue? That's what Rivian's doing this morning. Pretty remarkable. Let's jump over to some of the FANG stops this morning. Amazon shares opening up a bit. Uh, we're up about 15 bucks for Amazon. Microsoft shares so far this morning flat. We jump over to Google shares. Google trading up a bit as well. We're going to open above 29. Now ah, they get a bit ask kind of splitting that difference there over across the board. And we jump over to what else we have going on in terms of earnings still. Uh, many companies out. I'm going to pull this up here in a moment. So we talked about Target. And let's jump over to Lowe's real briefly. Lowe's. Beat estimates, expectations for the fiscal third quarter. Got a boost from online sales. Same store sales rising by 2.2% in the three-month period. Uh, the CEO said sales to home pros, that's really where they're going to catch up to Home Depot, rose 16% in the third quarter. Uh, quite a price tag there. Let's jump down some of the other stocks that are moving. We talked about Lowe's and Target. Those are the two big ones. Uh, is that another sale for Tesla shares for Elon Musk Tesla? <laughs> this stock is held up so well. Remarkable when you think about it. We're trading at 1,060 right now. Tesla, uh, positive in the pre-market. We were up to almost 1,080, though, as Elon continues to dump shares. Uh, yeah, Lucid. Lucid. They are really flying as well. Check out that acceleration yesterday. Overnight, some volatility up to 62. You're back down to 54 right now for Lucid shares. And we jump to notes and bonds to take a look this morning. We got the 10-year basically flat at 130.06. You got the 30-year negative, eight ticks right now at 159.24. And we jump over to the VIX, the volatility index this morning, up a bit to 16.46. Uh, remarkable resilience in this market. You're looking at an S&P when you put it on a daily basis. Uh, right now, within 20 points of an all-time high, folks. Back within the uptrend channel. Remarkable. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back right after the break. I'll be right back. Stay tuned, folks. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE, and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a music.
Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by two right now. We got the Dow negative by 48, NASDAQ 100 positive by eight. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, noon Eastern time, folks. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market, breaking down the day's market action, walking you through hypothetical trade setups in this market, talking about defined risk using options. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. You know, lot lots going on today, even though in terms of economic data, there's not a lot. Some mortgage apps and some housing starts, but you've got Wells Fargo upgrading Boeing. That, that, that'll that be a nice mover today. You've got Target down now about $13. Maybe should have figured that out after the Walmart move. Uh, you got Lowe's up $10. You got TJ Maxx, TJX up 4 So pretty uh, interesting day setting up here, Tommy. It is pretty remarkable, Kevin. You take a look at uh, Target even, for instance. Target closes yesterday at 266. As you said, we're down about 13 bucks right now, trading at 253. 253, Kevin, takes us back almost four months. Just like that, we wipe out from July. Now, uh, we had some real volatility in that time frame, even at Target shares. We were down at 222 recently. Um, but strong numbers, man, strong comp sales for these companies. But Target dealing with some woes, maybe for supply chain issues, maybe some margin issues. Uh, and on the flip side of that, Kevin, we have Lowe's trading higher, continuing the run. They got a boost yesterday for Home Depot's boost. And it uh, looks like it wasn't even enough on Lowe's. Remarkable, the low, uh, the low, you know, just the performance of some of these companies. Lowe's now was just trading at 180 back in August, and you're going to be trading at 250 this morning, Kevin. Um, remarkable as you get some winners and losers in here. Home Depot and Lowe's looks to be winners the last couple of days. Walmart and Target, a uh, little bit of a divergence there, not quite getting it done. What's your take on kind of those two comparisons now that we got the numbers from uh, all four of those companies out? Yeah, a little bit of margin pressure at some of the retailers. And Walmart, although, man, it's, I don't want to live in a world, Tommy, where $140 billion in revenue is not enough to make a stock go up. That is Seriously. incredible, the numbers that Walmart put up. And still, the stock sold off. So, listen, I think these companies are fabulous. And any weakness in Target should be traded eventually. And the same with Walmart, because these companies, they're, they're slowly but surely taking over everything that's retail. And it's just a matter of how much market share they get from each other. So, you know, I, the numbers that these companies are putting up are just spectacular in their, in their, in their you know, the entirety of them. So, um, yeah, th these are tradable events. But clearly, Tommy, the home repair surge continues. It's crazy, man. I mean, it's it's got to be pretty cool to be a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, except for when it comes earnings season sometimes, Kevin, because expectations, man, you look at the comp store sales, just like you're talking about, um, massive growth. Comp store sales were just big time across the board on these companies. You know, I don't have the numbers in my head. They're just big numbers across the board, um, and they trade lower. It's got to be tough when you're CEO or any executive in these companies, man. You come into the earnings event, right, and you say, ah, we're going to have comp store sales of, you know, 5% growth, 9% growth. We're dealing with, we're going to have revenue, like you said, of $140 billion. Uh, and then somebody in the room says, ah, I don't know if the market's going to like these numbers because our margins, and you say, man, talk about expectations. Uh, so we move from these numbers, Kevin, we still got some numbers coming out this week uh, for earnings. We got some chip stocks potentially. What are you guys going to be looking at uh, on the program at noon Eastern time coming up today? You know, big show today. Obviously, uh, these markets are dominated by retail. But today, in our first segment, we're going to look at the most high profile name of the week, and that is NVIDIA. Right? So we'll trade NVIDIA. Um, like Foley will do a presentation on retail, so we'll trade Kohl's in the second segment and then macy's the stock that's up what is it like 180 percent so far this year so we'll trade macy's in the final segment and you got nvidia up a solid 50 percent kevin over the last six right. weeks not a bad run uh either and cole's interesting story i'll tell you kevin i was looking at some christmas shopping over the weekend um i was doing price shopping we're gonna get uh one of those play kitchens in the house right we got a four-year-old in the house you know you got to get one of those play kitchens you gotta get plenty of things they can play with uh we're, we're price shopping at amazon we're price shopping at walmart we're talking in the house we're saying walmart usually gets it done on price they do um and then what happens kevin cole's pops up up. And who's the winner? Kohl's is beating Amazon and Walmart. Now, this is anecdotal, folks. It's one item, okay? But I was surprised right. that you had Kohl's beating 
and that's where we're going to end up buying this thing. And it's more than a hundred bucks. Um, and then you get some Kohl's bucks on top of it. And Kohl's got some good stuff, you know, as in that probably will get used during the holiday season. And I said to myself, man, how is Amazon and Walmart getting beat on price by a company like Kohl's? Now, that doesn't mean the company is going to go up, folks, because who knows if Kohl's is making any money if they're beating Amazon and Walmart. That's where my head went to next. But it is pretty interesting, Kevin, how fierce that competition is when you got a company like Kohl's that is competing at least on price with Amazon and Walmart, the two juggernauts. Well, in this big box retail story, right, we only talk about Target, Amazon, and Walmart. So Kohl's has got to find where they fit in in this big box r r retail story. So they've got to find their lane, right, and somewhere to where they can be the best in the world. I don't know what that is, but I'm yeah. sure they're trying – a lot of different things to carve out their little area of the retail I, I, market. I was impressed, you know, because, we, I mean, just maybe this is how it goes, right? Right. So I, I save 15, 20 bucks there. They give me my Kohl's bucks for 15 bucks. And then what do I might do, Kevin? I might go in the store and spend $250 when they give me my free 15 bucks. Who knows? I'm just that's that's there, one there. avenue. Um, because we know you can't walk in a store and, and use a coupon. Most of the time you use the coupon and you end up spending something else, especially during holiday season. Well, Kevin, we look forward to the conversation. NVIDIA going to be an interesting one, of course, and I'll be watching for Kohl's coming up at 12 noon Eastern time today, man. You have a great one. You too, Tommy. Thanks so much, man. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got a chart of Kohl's up there right now. Kohl's up three tenths percent. And Kevin Hayes made a great point there. It's interesting how I mean, how do you compete as a retailer, right? In the likes of Amazon, Walmart, Target. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see when Kohl's comes out with their numbers, what they're talking about here. Now, they are out with their numbers on earnings. You're talking about tomorrow. They get a $5 move. That's a hefty move when you think about the stock's only at $58. So a little bit of volatility priced into that for sure. We take a look at this chart. It's been in quite a consolidation. We put up the three-year weekly. I mean, you made it up to above 60 bucks early in the year, below 50 bucks uh, just recently. But for the better part of the year, you've been between 50 and 60 dollars, kind of right where we came into the end of 2019. Now we back this up even further for some context. You were all the way up to 82. Okay, and look at this volatility we've had in coals, man. Um, up and down and all around, dating all the way back to really 1998. We've never made it above 80. I say never, I shouldn't. We made it up to 83, but for any good period of time. Uh, and on the downside, you've seen 40 bucks many times over the years, and we are literally smack dab in the middle of that area at about 60 bucks on Kohl's. Now you jump over from market cap wise, we're talking about a market cap right now of $8.8 .8 billion. Not bad, uh, nothing to shake your head at in terms of that is a real valuation for this company. Um, and we'll see how they trade on their numbers tomorrow. Okay, jumping around to what else we got going on. I wanted to jump real quick to Target to jump through on those cost pressures because this is gonna be a, a constant theme we will talk the company isn't foisting all its cost increases onto customers said the cfo echoing comments by walmart gross margin fell in the third quarter on higher merchandise and freight costs now you heard me say walmart usually bests on price right and they target uh, excuse me Kohl's is somehow beating them on this just one item toy that i'm looking at um, but target said a similar deal and it's interesting that Walmart, of all things, they are known on beating on price. And maybe they're the one that may have some trouble. Now, Target, I guess, is doing the same deal here. But all we've been hearing about is companies being able to transfer the cost to their consumers. Doesn't seem like that's going to be the case for some companies. Walmart may be struggling to hike those prices up, considering how price conscious their consumers are. We're definitely protecting price. I believe that's the CFO. Yes, it is. The CFO, Michael Fidelki, saying um, we're seeing cost increases that are higher than our retail increases. So costs are going up at a rate that they are not able to raise them yet. Uh, the warning, which took shine off an otherwise strong quarter, I'd say the same thing with Walmart. Strong, strong quarters. This is the only thing, but guess what? It's a big thing because it eats away at profits. Fueled anxiety among investors that retailers will absorb part of the pain from rising inflation and sacrifice a portion of potential profits to avoid ceding ground to rivals. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, Amazon's been the king of that in terms of Amazon has no worry about ceding potential profits to make sure, well, I should say sacrificing potential profits to make sure that they avoid ceding ground to rivals. And I would say it's a critical point in these companies' growth stages, as in everything is transitioning to whether it's online purchases, um, order and pick up at your convenience. The last thing you do is want to fall behind right now. Uh, you want to position yourself as the company that you can order online, pick up at the store, order online, same day, next day delivery type deals. Um, it's probably in their interest in the long term to make sure that they don't allow their competitors to beat them out on price for a short-term period uh, and make sure they keep their customers happy. I mean, that's one thing Amazon does so well, folks. They keep their customers happy. I remember in the early days, I, I think I've been a Prime subscriber for like 10 years, and the one thing they were great at is that they would just give you, if you didn't get a package within two days, man, they would give you right away like a $20 bonus. They'd take $20 off your next Prime. They'd make you feel right. They'd make you feel like you got what you wanted from that transaction as opposed to, you know, something doesn't show up. They say, sorry. They say, you know, you can, we'll get it to you next day. It's just really important to keep your customers happy. And that's what you're seeing here because Walmart, Target, they're competing with Amazon and they know that Amazon gets it done in a big way. Uh, you look at the growth for these companies, man. Talk about the pandemic being kind to a company like Target. These are same store sales, folks, year over year. It's bonkers, 20%, 22%. Now it's decreased a bit. But what I want to comment here is that 
So the last two quarters, second quarter and third quarter here for Target we're talking about, same store sales versus a year ago are up 9% last quarter and 12.7% for the third quarter. That's same store sales year over year. Well, look where the second quarter and the third quarter were last year. The second quarter was up 24.0% and they still went up 9%. The third quarter last year was up 20% and they just went up 12.7% on that number. I mean, folks, for simple math, if you're doing a million dollars, well, a 20% bump would be 1.2 million. And then you got to add another 12% to that. What's that going to be? That's going to be another $120,000 at least uh, on that. So you're talking about going from a million dollars to go two years ago to doing almost 1.35 million, just using simple numbers. Point being, you're talking about same store sales growth of like 35% over a two year period. Folks, I don't need to tell you. And you even go back further. They still had some great growth. Look at where they were for second quarter in 2018, 6.5%, 5%. Just staggering numbers, as Kevin said. It's remarkable the numbers they're putting up with. Profit might be a problem in the short term. But I would agree with Kevin in terms of when you're looking at these companies, okay, these companies are not going BK anytime soon. They're not losing revenue. They're struggling a little bit to make margins. And they're doing that because of supply chain issues that are causing inflationary pressures on their costs of goods sold that are going up and they can't raise the prices fast enough to keep up with that. Uh, that's not going to continue forever, folks. Okay, These revenues, the same source sales are arising. Eventually, they're going to be able to pull that one back in, uh, collect those profits, much like Amazon did in the same way. Uh, Amazon up eight tenths percent today as we look at that. Let's jump over to NVIDIA shares. Kevin mentioned NVIDIA coming out with their earnings. I believe it's tomorrow or is it after the bell tonight? After the bell tonight, NVIDIA will be out with their numbers. We're looking at about a 6% move priced into the numbers for their options. $16 move for a $300 stock. A uh, little bit of a pullback. We get back four bucks right on the open. Now, the one thing I will say, folks, you want to talk about expectations. We got a double bagger going on in NVIDIA shares over the last six months. And as I said, you're up 50%. If you're on margin, that's a 100% bagger, right? It is. You buy NVIDIA on margin in October and you've doubled your money and it's November 17th. Keep that in mind as you come into earnings, folks, and you got a 5% move priced in. This thing has been a one-way shot to the upside for NVIDIA shares. I believe we had AMD out with their numbers. Was that earlier or no? No, that was a couple weeks ago. AMD trading high yesterday. You're giving it back a little bit with the chip stocks trading slightly lower. This morning, AMD down about 1% so far. We jump over to Google shares. Google flat at 29.81. Let's see how Tesla's trading this morning. Up about six tenths percent, holding up pretty well. Tesla shares. All right, we're going to be talking to our man Teddy Kegstat. We can get back from this break. One thing I want to talk about here: Goldman saying market greed is now outpacing fear. Dramatic change in, is needed in climate transition. Solomon says China is going to continue to support financial opening. They got a bunch going on in here, but Goldman, CEO, whoops, let me. It's talking to me. I don't need that. Oh, that one's talking to me, too. Um, markets could face a rocky time ahead as the global economy seeks to emerge from the abrupt impact of the pandemic. Keep your eye on profits, folks. Walmart, Target, a little bit of a heads up, but it's been a strong season. We'll be coming back talking to our man Teddy Cakes at, folks. Stay tuned. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now, negative by six. Let me make sure I got my chart up there. Let me get that chart up. There we go. All right. We got the S&Ps negative by six right now, folks. We get the NASDAQ positive by eight. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad, folks. Every trading day, you can reach Teddy at forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So let's kick it off with some crude. Why not, Teddy? Because we love the crude. You've been calling it well, man, for, geez, we're going back, what, four, five, six months at least now. A uh, mm -hmm. little bit of a pullback in crude under 80 bucks, but uh, all things considered, sitting pretty comfortably at about 80 bucks at this point. Uh, talk to me a little bit about what we got going on on crude right now. All right, crude right now, I think you're just in a little cons consolidation holding pattern. That's it. I think it's just a little pause for the cause before the next bull rally happens, without a doubt. That sums it up well, man. That's it. Why not? We'll move yeah. on. Uh, but I yes, agree. So. I mean, it's because people love to talk about it. Today. Let's jump in, in terms of, oh, man, the pullback, mm -hmm. right? We're down four bucks. We're up four bucks. Um, I got the chart here going back to just mm -hmm. August when we were trading at $61, something like that. Um, and, you know, I deal a lot with Fibonacci numbers, Teddy. I love them. The mm -hmm. 382 is just a healthy pullback, in my opinion. Um, of course, mm -hmm. move, stocks are going to move in that direction occasionally, even within a bull run. And we haven't even come come close to that yet on that one run we had over the period of a couple months, let alone if you start looking at the trends we've had going back even further um, right. in this crude market. Where? Let me ask you this. Where would crude need to go to, to kind of change the landscape potentially of things. Um, because man, I see it all the time now on Facebook, mm -hmm. people posting their gas prices, you know, you can't, somebody yesterday posted an $80 fill up for their big Ford Explorer, stuff like that. Um, where where would that market need to go maybe to, to change the tune that we might see lower prices? Um, anything like that on your horizon or what do you look for so, to that market? No, I'm not. I'm not even remotely bearish to oil business, okay. especially with the, with the climate right now, with the administration, with what they want to do within the Northeast. Absolutely not. That's only that. That, if anything, is going to just add fuel to the fire to the rally, without a doubt. So cool. I really, truly believe right now it's just a pause for the cause. Look for <clears throat> look to buy in right now. I would say this is a buying opportunity, not a selling opportunity. You know, there's no reason nice. to see even remotely a correction in oil now. Would it would it impact the markets? Absolutely. I mean, the oil market would have to get below 60 before any barometer is even going to start to say, ooh, this might help slow inflation slightly 
in the present, not anything that's catching up already. You got to remember that's the, those the inflation that's already running into gear right now. A break in oil is not going to put anything any stop on that. What it may do is slow yeah. down what's going on. You know, um, but we would yeah. need a significant uh, reversal in oil to get back below fifty, forty-five dollars a barrel for anyone to even say, "Hey, maybe things are starting to, to slow down and balance out." And you got to remember that. There's a new floor in oil. Oil can't get below 35, 40 bucks a barrel anymore because since they got rid of the pipeline, a bunch of other rules since January 20th, Warren Buffett is moving all the oil in the country now via railroads. So that is now causing an artificial floor in oil. And until that policy changes, which it's not going to change anytime soon, you're not going to see oil really have a big sell off for quite some time. You know, it's interesting, too. I started thinking about as I'm seeing, you know, more and more people just talking about gas prices and $80, you know, mm -hmm. to fill up a gas tank. Um, it's remarkable where we've been in terms of when we had the last time that we had crude up at four bucks, you know, or gas prices mm -hmm. up at four bucks, stuff like that. People started getting away from SUVs, right? Well, yes. boy, it's been a long time since that happened, man. I think, and I was just Googling it during the break. Um, and I was like, what car company did it? And I thought it was Ford. And I think it was Ford. In, in 2018, they almost like stopped selling production of passenger cars because they were just making mm -hmm. so much money off trucks, SUVs, right. and crossovers. Um, that's got to be a big influence right now, too, man. And everybody loves SUVs, uh, trucks. Yeah. You know, I'm near Central Florida, man. Everybody's got a Ford F-150 pickup truck or something sure. like that to go along with their mm -hmm. Ford Explorer. Um, that's, you know, not enough people talk about it that we kind of got lulled into thinking mm -hmm. and I that you know and I it's, it's just interesting right that people forget so quickly they sure. look into these big vehicles that are gas guzzlers and then right. you say hey you know gas was not going to be two bucks a gallon forever folks right um, and that's got to be a big influence as well that's hitting that market sure. as we're all rolling around with those cars all right mm -hmm. let's jump to some of the come uh, currencies Teddy where okay. do you want to kick things off for currencies all right. Well, we everyone knows that the dollar index is exploding right now. Since we talked even last week and over the past two weeks, the dollar index is now at multi-month highs. We're, we're at the highest point in the dollar index since June of uh, or July of 2020. You know, so that's a big deal right now as far as dollar strength overall. You know, um, there's a yeah. couple markets that aren't that strong or weak against the dollar, but as a whole, the euro has been getting pounded. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with uh, one inflation and two, you got the COVID um, spike that's flaring up in Germany. You know, yeah. the EU is go is going backwards. You know, so does that mean? I mean, now you got to realize too, we're in a weird situation. We have numbers that are higher than a year ago, and we don't have lockdowns. You know, or we have some lockdowns in sure. other places. So the question is, are these, is the narrative going to go back to the way it was and the way they're supporting and they're going to start locking stuff down? So that's very negative for the EU, you know, or are they going to say, hey, we're not going to do what we did the last time. We're going to stay open. You know, either way, I think it's going to be a, a bear for the euro US dollar. It's going to be tough. The pound, because of oil prices, I think is stabilized. It's not going to get hit too much harder. You know, if the bear still um, maintains on the, I look at it right now, the pound's in a correction right now. The euro is in a bear market. You know, um, okay. U.S. dollar, U.S. dollar yen. Remember, you know, I've been bullish this baby for a while. We've had a hell of a rally the past couple of days, you know. Yeah. So and now we're up on but butting up against these new highs, multi month highs. And I, I see the U.S. dollar yen going to 116. I think we just have a little bit of a pause today because dollar strength has been very strong over the past week and a half, you know, and it's yeah. not because of it's not because of necessarily big news. It's about what's going on on the broader economic state. It's more the macro than the microeconomics going on right now. Yeah, it is interesting, man. I have a friend, one of my best friends lives in Switzerland, and so he's more in touch, mm -hmm. of course, with what's going on in Europe. Um, and he was talking about, uh, he was tweeting out some stuff in Austria, man. Austria, you know, part, of course, over mm -hmm. there, that they, they just got, you know, they're almost, it almost feels like what we were going through you know, whether it was early this year or during the holidays almost in terms mm -hmm. of hospitals filling up, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I. I imagine that's going to have an impact, man, when they have literally right. once you reach that hospital problem in terms of hospitals filling up, mm -hmm. that's where even as a politician, you know, you can't have hospitals filling up and people just mm -hmm. not being able to get regular service for regular type of medical care. Right. Um, it's a bummer it's going on. But, yeah, I, I just it's mm -hmm. surprising, you know, that it continues. Uh, and look at the yeah. U.S. dollar Swiss, too, real quick. Sorry to interject. Sure. Of the European markets. Remember, I've been saying for a while that it's odd that the Swiss has more volatility than the pound and the euro. Look at that bounce that's happened over the past few sessions in the U.S. dollar Swiss. It's like a balloon underwater. 
So for that currency to be the one with the most volatility and pressure, that's the one that's guiding the direction for the European currencies right now. So weakness in the Swiss definitely is weakness for the euro, for sure. Not necessarily a pound, remember, because Brexit happened. You can't always equate the pound with Brexit. And I think that's one of the reasons why the pound is not selling off like the euro, because they're no longer part of the EU. They don't have these problems the EU has. You know, they have their own. I'm not discounting the UK by any means. But their sovereignty and separation and the fact that they don't have to forego resources to flood into multiple other countries um, unless it's on their own, you know, relations. Yeah. I mean, Brexit caught a lot of a lot of beef when it happened, mm-hmm. man. But in light of what's going on, I know it's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm Teddy, still going to 116, baby. <laughs> 116, man. We'll pull it up. Big moves. Teddy, thanks for the conversation, man. We'll talk to you next week. Absolutely. Okay, care. Playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis the tiger first mortgage program may be the program for you the best rate on a five-year cd in the country right now according to bankrate.com is paying one percent per year or one thousand dollars per one hundred thousand dollars invested the tiger first mortgage program pays seven percent per year paid monthly on secured high value buildable properties in saint petersburg florida The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First mortgage? The Tiger First mortgage program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First mortgage program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. we got the markets turning a little bit negative right now. wish we had a little bit more time with Teddy. Maybe we'll have to get him on for true segments next week. You can reach Teddy, folks, every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. Talking about those euro markets. Uh, and this is the tweet I was just going to bring up. One of my best friends, he was over there sharing this. Not familiar with, you know, this tweet. It's obviously coming out of uh, the European area. I think it's coming out of a Switzerland publication, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, English coronavirus updates for Switzerland. There you go. Uh, but talking about Austria. We are highly overwhelmed by the amount of hospital admissions. We have to store dead bodies in hallways. We have no space anymore. Uh, very sad from a humanity perspective, um, period, end of sentence. Uh, when you do look at the economy, 
it's that is where things are going to start to matter, folks, no matter how you feel about the pandemic. And that is the reason why um, that we've had these lockdowns as they've posed a threat post vaccination is because, yes, we got to get back to life. But at some point, if the hospitals start filling up with and, you know, I'll give you the example in Florida, I was talking about it steadfast when we had our spike going on, thankfully, about three months ago now. Um, biggest frustration on my part, folks, was when people that started needing regular care were not able to get that care because hospitals were being filled up with predominantly unvaccinated people. You know, you had people who needed, whether it's surgeries for cancer, okay, and the likes of that, they were not able to get those surgeries because hospitals weren't doing them because they couldn't take more people that needed beds overnight because they were already full with an influx of patients. Point being, this starts happening in Europe, you will see shutdowns predominantly in a big way, uh, and that will impact whether it's currencies, uh, economies, et cetera. But sad story going on over there, unfortunate, as we they get another spike. Uh, and, you know, it is interesting how the, the timing of these spikes is causing so much volatility in terms of the U.S. having their spike ahead. Now there is some spikes going on in the Midwest. Hopefully that doesn't um, exceed any lofty levels. All right, folks, should be an interesting day in the markets. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. We're going to have a replay at 11 because Larry's doing his webinar. Fast market at noon. You heard him. They're going to be talking about NVIDIA. They're going to be talking about Kohl's. We got our man Steve Rhodes live at 1 o'clock. Dave White live at 2 o'clock. And Tom O'Brien, my dad, wraps it up live from three till four thanks so much for starting your day with me folks and stay tuned we got our man basil chapman he's coming up live next we'll be right back